Hello everybody, welcome to part 4 of our e-commerce website building lesson series. In this one we're going to tackle inventory management. And before we go any further with the series, I just want to remind and reiterate that this is a web programming lesson series and the whole time the focus of this series is going to be keep things basic, get people to understand the backbones of systems like this, and then they themselves can get creative, knowledgeable, and expand upon it. Okay, now with that said, let's continue. Okay, here's my inventory that's going to serve as dummy data for my store. You'll notice that each one of my product images is the same size and aspect ratio. When we last left off, we successfully created the admin area index page and the admin login form. So on the index page, when the admin is logged in successfully, we give them a link to a page called inventorylist.php. So let's just take this index page, file, save as inventorylist underscore list.php. It'll have the .php extension already. Save. And now we have a page called inventory list. So we can go into the code view of inventory list now and change the title tag to say inventory list and in the top of the page where the code is that was on the admin index page you pretty much just want to keep that there you could also take all of this code and put it into an include file or an external class file and use it on multiple pages but since I'm not going to have too many pages inside of this lesson series I'm just going to keep it all in the respective pages but you can choose to externalize this code by creating A, either a PHP class file, or B, creating a PHP include file where this code would be included. But like I said, I'm leaving it on the page because it's just fine. Let's get this down so you can see the code more. So on my inventory list page, I'm keeping all of that code exactly how it is because I want to make sure this person's logged in as session manager. I want to gather their session ID, manager, and password variables, and I want to query the database using those variables to make sure that this person is allowed to be in the system. Take note that we are connected to MySQL in this section, and we also session start. So I'm just going to collapse that. Keep things neat. Now, right under that existing PHP code block, let's put a new one couple of line breaks in there and let's create a variable called product list and this is the variable that will hold the whole list after we query it out of the database of all the products in our store right now we're just going to initialize the variable by claiming it as empty but it's initialized now we want to put an SQL query and that's going to query the database to select all from the products table so it's going to select all fields from the products table. Now we simply count that SQL query output result set. So the result set of how many items it gathers we'll put into a little variable that's a number. It'll be product count. Now after we gather the count we say if the product count is greater than zero that means there are results and there are products in the database. We're going to output them else we're going to output a message within the product list variable that will make the product list output say you have no products listed in your store yet. So here in the if the if part of this statement we're saying if the product count is greater than zero then we definitely want to output a product list from the database. So let's put in the while loop. Now with the while loop in there we can access all of the rows that come out and each field in each row that we want to access and we're going to compound that into a product list variable which will make each one a line. You can see in each one's output I have a line break and all I'm outputting right now is the ID variable coming out of each row. You see I'm accessing each row's ID. So each product's ID is coming out right here and I'm putting it into a local PHP variable called ID and I can output that in my product list output. So basically all you have to do is take this product list variable 
and we're going to gather some more information for each product the title and everything the name of it but right now we're just going to test by getting the ID out making sure but at this point we have no items in the store so it's going to say you have no products listed in your store yet guaranteed when we run this script the first time if there's no products in your store but once you put the first product in your store this part of the statement will execute and give you output result so down in your body section you just go in design view find a nice spot where you want to put it let's just make this say inventory list and where these links are let's remove those let's go into code view and right between this now you don't even need the p tags you can just put that variable name put a semicolon highlight all of it go up to PHP echo and there you go you're echoing out the product list however many products there are in the inventory and each one will have a line break now, if you don't know about loops loops will iterate over an array of data to make each one output if you need to within the loop and since when you query a MySQL database you get an array we use MySQL fetch array so in design view we have something that says inventory list and then you'll have your list output right here but on this page also since I'm just showing the basics I'm gonna make this whole system very very basic and maybe above this div right here I'm gonna have another div that's aligned to the right over here and I want it to say big plus sign and have it say add new store item alright so let's highlight that div since we want one right on top of it highlight it go into code view and you can see the div is highlighted for us let's go right above it put in a new div okay remove that div align right give it a style and go to margin right 24 pixels or maybe even a little more 32 pixels now let's look in design view and since we have nothing in that div we can't see it let's put something in it and there it is now when I type into it let's put a plus sign add new store item or add new inventory item whatever you want to say and that you're gonna make a link that link is going to go it's gonna be an anchor tag actually it's just gonna be an anchored link to this same page under this div we're gonna put a form the form is gonna be for adding new items so anytime even if this list is very long this inventory list maybe there's it gets up to be 20 50 items in there at any time they can click this and it'll shoot them down to the form on the page to be able to put a new item in but if you want to make yours a little different you can make this a link to another page which is all the page would only be have a form for adding new inventory items but since I want to keep my system basic and lean I'm gonna put it on this same page under the output list and when anybody clicks this link it will shoot them to the form for adding new inventory items that's under the output list okay so I've added a little title above my little table so you can see all I have is a blank table here and a title above it and I'm going to show you how to add the anchor tag if you don't know how to put a targeted anchor on a page link if you happen to have a long page that might have data that's vertically way down on it that you want to make links to certain target areas on that page that's what we're going to show you real quick so I'm going to click right here by this h3 tag go into the code view and right above that h3 tag I'm going to add this which is an anchor with a name of inventory form and an ID of inventory form now all you have to do is go to your link highlight it go into your code view and the href give it a value of this page inventory list.php the pound sign and then go to that targeted anchor 
that we put in right here. See it? So that'll make the page snap into view for this targeted region when the user clicks that link. Now I'm going to wrap an HTML form around this table. I'm going to go into code view. And right here I'm going to pop in a form tag. Action is going to be this same file inventory lists PHP ENC type multi part form data name could be my form ID is also my form methods post that should be all we need for now. Now let's go under the table, the very bottom. Line break, the opening bracket, then forward slash. And it'll automatically close that tag for you. Any tag that's open that should be closed, it will close that tag for you. So you can see my form tag is wrapped around my table. You see the red line going there. Now all I have to do is put my form elements inside of this table to have a nice organized little form. And since I showed building the form in the last one, I won't show me constructing this form here, but I'll show you the result of what I create. Okay, so you can see I have my add new inventory form all set up and it has one, two, three, four, five, six fields of information that are going to be sent through. As you go into the code view, you can see within that table are all the fields. Each field has a name and ID. So when the value, when the person presses submit, all of those values will be posted to the script and we can access them and parse all those values to the database. And here we have a file field, which this one, we have to upload this file they submit to a folder on the website. The file that they submit, the JPEG image they submit, is not going to go into the database. It's going to go into a folder and it's going to get the ID of this product as its title. And I'm going to choose to use JavaScript to validate the form to make sure that all the fields are filled in rather than using PHP to validate it. Because honestly if somebody's a, an admin in the store it's not like having a social network. The person, whoever's admin in the store is there to do business and do it correctly. They're not going to be fooling around. But you can still validate it to make sure that they have all the fields filled in before they press submit or before you parse the data to the database. I chose to change my form elements, my category and subcategory, to select tags. That way they are option pull downs. That way the store manager has to stay within a set bounds of things that they can add when it comes to category and subcategory. Okay, so before we place a little bit of PHP on top of this script here, right above where we're selecting all from products to show the product list to the store manager, we're going to get a few more items. Let's just get at least the product name out. This would be product name accessing from the database. So let's take that variable and put it right after ID. So ID dash product name. Save. I'm just going to take this and you're also going to add more things to this output, this product output list. But just for testing purposes, let's go ahead and collapse that down. Now right in between those two PHP blocks we're going to add one more and remember this top PHP block was the one that checks their session and makes sure they're supposed to be a store manager just like we had on the index.php page of the admin section so right in between those two PHP blocks and let's write a note in this one to ourselves this block grabs the whole list for viewing. Now right in between those two PHP blocks you put this PHP block. 
which you don't have to have your yours all blocked off. It could be one giant PHP block. But I'm just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to keep my block separate. So what this block is going to do is error reporting. Since your scripting is getting a little more complicated, you might want to know if anything's wrong in your script. So if you run these two lines in your script, they'll show errors no matter what you have claimed inside of your PHP any file on your server. Because some servers are set up, the PHP any file is set up to suppress and not show errors. So this will force errors to the page if there are any. Let's go ahead and collapse that too. And you can put that on any script that you like, that you have that's a PHP script, if you want to check them. Now we're going to pop one more PHP block in here, right under where we're doing error reporting, and right above the block that grabs the whole list for viewing. And this one, and it looks about, let's see, it goes from line 28 to about 48. So it's about 20 lines. And what this does is, let's go ahead and collapse that, make ourselves a note. I'll show you that code in one second. Parse the form data and add inventory item to the system. So this little code block that I have here is responsible for parsing the form once it's all filled in. It uploads the picture to a folder that we're going to create in one second. Right when I explain it, I'll create the folder and you'll want to create the folder too. Alright, so the first thing that happens is we have an if condition which all of this code is wrapped in that if condition. And what that if condition states is if is set post product name from the form. So if the form is the form button is pressed, we're going to parse the form. This code will not run unless that form button is pressed to post the product name field to this script. So this if condition makes sure that somebody has pressed that submit form. These next one, two, three, four, five lines, they gather the posted variable from the form. Inside of that, we're using the MySQL real escape string function to cleanse the data. It's a way to filter your data before you send it into a database. And remember in this first PHP block up here, we are connecting to the database right there. So to use that function, MySQL real escape, real escape string, you have to be connected to the database. If you weren't connected to the database and you ran this PHP function, you would notice an error. Now since we're gathering all the posted variables from the form, we cleanse them there, we have them all set up nice in local PHP variables here at this point. Then we see if that product name is an identical match to another product in the database. So we select ID from products where product name equals this product name that the person is trying to upload. Limit 1. Then we can run MySQL num rows to see if there's a product match in that name. If there's a product match, the value of this variable is going to be a 1. So we just say if product match is greater than 0, so if it's a 1, you echo out, sorry, you tried to place a duplicate product name into the system. And you give them a little link that says click here to go back to the inventory list page and start fresh and then make sure you exit the script at that point because further down in the script if product match equals zero then you can keep processing the script but if it's greater than zero you want to echo out a message and exit so if the product match is equal to zero which it should be to successfully upload something that means no product name has an identical match then you can put these item put this item into the database into the products table so you SQL query into insert into products product name price details category subcategory and the date added those are the fields that we're going to fill with the values of product name variable price variable gathered from the form details variable gathered from the form 
category and subcategory that the person typed in and now what now does is it adds today's date to a date field in the database and then you can claim or die with the MySQL error as an argument in that function and if anything goes wrong you'll see the die function output then the next line we can gather what that product ID was by using the MySQL insert ID function which will let you know what the auto incremented ID is for that item just placed in you can gather that into a variable then you claim a new variable called new name is equal to product ID dot JPEG that's going to be for when you move the file that they upload which is the JPEG image that's going to be the product image so you move uploaded file and you gather the file by using this information file field temp name and files is a global variable you can read about global variables at developphp.com so you access the global variable for the uploaded file and then the next argument within this move uploaded file function is where you want to put that item and what the name of it is so you go to the path really this is the second argument in the move uploaded file function is the path and the name so the path is one folder up into a folder called inventory images and it's going to have if it's the first item in your database it's going to be named 1.jpg the second item will be named 2.jpg for the picture so inventory images we have not created that folder yet one directory up and we need to do that so we can just minimize this and go to our just go new folder put inventory images boom then you make sure you FTP that inventory images folder to the server I'm gonna take it and drag it into my root directory inventory images I'm gonna go back into the store admin folder here and store admin folder on this side and upload inventory list now into the store admin folder now remember when I mentioned having JavaScript in place on this page to validate this form to make sure that the store manager doesn't leave any of these fields blank here's the tutorial for that right here validating HTML forms before processing to a PHP script and this is in the learn JavaScript section you can click here learn JavaScript and right here examples and common common webmaster uses validating HTML forms and that's how you apply it I have a little example script showing you how to apply form validation using JavaScript to an HTML form that you have on your page which is what we're using on this inventory list page that's a simple HTML form that you can validate using JavaScript and I'm not going to put it in place because I already made a tutorial all about validating using JavaScript over here so I'm not going to waste my time if you want to apply it you can you could also choose to use straight PHP to validate the form within your parsing mechanism right here you would add a little bit of code to see if any of those fields are empty and if those fields are empty you echo out a little error message and you exit the script but using JavaScript they won't have to let's say they fill in the whole form but they forget to put the product price in they leave that blank they press submit with JavaScript it's a little bit easier because it'll just throw up a little JavaScript alert and it won't process the form that way they can have all the other values stay in place with PHP it'll take a little more work to get all those values to stay in place if you let the page reload so using JavaScript is a little easier because the page doesn't reload before it checks. Alright, let's collapse this parse parsing mechanism for the form. Go to the block that grabs the whole list for viewing. And right here where it shoots out the product name and the ID, we're going to put a couple of spaces, which you can hold Control, Shift, and Space to put up that NBSP which is a space character 
So it'll have a few spaces between these things, and I'm going to put edit, and then another space, another space. Actually, I'll put a bullet there, and bull. That'll be a bullet symbol. And I'm going to put delete. Make them links by going up to common. Hit the link symbol. OK. And let's make these single quotes so we don't have to escape them. And let's not put any, we're not going to put any value into that link just yet. Okay, let's do the same thing for the edit word. Make those single quotes so we don't have to escape them with the backslash. Now, save. Now when you're at inventory list, you'll see edit and delete now for each inventory item that comes out of there. And you can also get the date. You can access the date. Here, I'll put that in right now. To get the date, let's just pop this line in. Make sure we're getting the row date added. Let's remove that. Grab that. There. Row date added. And we use the string to time and then the string f time functions in PHP to format the date to look the way we want. So date added can go right here in the output, the product list variable output. And with that period there, before the equal sign, that means it'll keep compounding values. It'll append to that variable. So if you have 10 items, all 10 will be there, packed into this variable. So the date, let's put the date. And you can order this by the date if you want. Products order by date added ascending or descending whichever way you want that's ascending and this is descending so let's try that now let's get date added variable into the string right here somewhere wherever we want it let's put it right before the ID date added hyphen ID hyphen product name space 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 edit bullet delete that's how the string renders now let's check it and see you can so you can configure these any way you need to this uh, inventory list output line to have any information you want in it and this can actually be a link to the product page and I might throw that in, but I'm not going to do it right now in video. All you have to do is go in and put a link tag to the product page and use this product ID. But we haven't even set up the product page yet to do that, so I'm not going to add it yet. And in part five, I'm going to show you how to edit and delete each of these inventory items. So when the person presses edit or they press delete, we'll make things happen.